The Petit family case The Petit family was for sure seen as a model family satisfying the best. Assumptions with their stable monetary foundation and excellent kids they were really respected by people around them The dad William Dainty was brought up in Connecticut and hung out in pretty much every game during secondary school especially in b-ball where he was a characteristic innovator notwithstanding his athletic ability he was likewise the most shrewd of his group as proven by his fulfillment of a regulation degree at Dartmouth College anyway his actual calling was not regulation he needed to assist with peopling care for the debilitated and make the world a superior spot so in the wake of graduating he chose to seek after a vocation in medication at the College of Pittsburgh during his third year of residency at the Youngsters Emergency Clinic of Pittsburgh William met Jennifer Bird of Prey a medical attendant in the oncology region and CO overseer of the well-being focus of a pre-graduate temporary position they before long became hopelessly enamored and the people who realized them certified they were ideal ideally suited for one another. They got hitched in 1985 four years after the fact they invited their most memorable girl Haley and the pregnancy prodded them to frame an enormous family. Driving them to purchase a house in Cheshire, Connecticut on November 17, 1995 their second girl Michaela was brought into the world in the wake of recuperating from labor Jennifer proceeded with her work as a medical caretaker and CO head of the temporary job sadly she later fostered numerous sclerosis a hopeless sickness she struggled until the end of her life anyway her family never stopped supporting her at 10 years old their oldest girl started gathering pledges for the public various sclerosis society which would raise critical assets over the years Michaela likewise succeeded scholastically and wanted to assume control over the raising money endeavors when her sister set off for college to keep helping her local area she had spent the late spring figuring out how to cook and frequently delighted in planning feasts for her family unfortunately this normal movement would lead the family to a game-changing experience with their culprit one July night in 2007 Michaela was getting ready supper for her family yet required more elements for her recipe so she and her mom went to the closest market at something similar place was Joshua Kamazarski who had as of late been let out of jail Kamar Jai's life as a youngster was horrible and muddled brought into the world to teen guardians he was set up for reception seven days after birth by his mom and was taken on by the Kamar JVY family referred to for their standing as recognized specialists in Europe they were a strict family and exceptionally severe with him notwithstanding his high intelligence level he battled in school driving his folks to self-teach him during his preliminary he guaranteed that he was physically mishandled by a cousin in his experience growing up yet. His family decided to keep it calm this drove him to foster a defiant and turbulent character by the age of 14 Joshua Kamas Orvi had been blamed for manhandling his sister and it was close to this time that he committed his most memorable thievery denoting the beginning of his vocation as a hoodlum in 2002 he was captured interestingly on 18 charges of robbery and burglary and was consequently condemned to nine years in jail during the preliminary he offered a chilling expression saying I like to stand by listening to individuals while they rest I like the sensation of attacking their security and frailty he was delivered released early 2007 at 27 years old authorities in control thought of him as a threat to society being the working out criminal with distorted propensities anyway the jury didn't notice the alerts and proclaimed Joshua apparently fit for discharge after his delivery he remained in a home for ex-convicts where he met his associate Stephen Hayes had spent a huge part of his life in jail initially being detained at 16 years old in the year 1980 throughout the Long term he was habitually captured for fierce theft and robbery he was condemned in 2004 and once more conceded parole in 2006 which drove him to a similar shelter where he met Kamas Arvi getting back to the evening of July 22, 2007 Michaela Petty was planning supper for her family yet acknowledged she really wanted more elements for her recipe she requested that her mom take her to the closest market to shop much to their dismay they were being seen by Kamas Arji who fastidiously noticed every Everything about make and model of their vehicle their countenances furthermore 
Michaela's light hair subsequent to shopping the Petit family got back uninformed that they were being followed in no time a while later Hayes messaged to Kamas Irvi that read I'm slashing at the piece to begin Nita Margarita soon Hayes then messaged we still on Kamas RJSKY answered yes Hayes next message asked soon to which Kamas or he answered I'm taking care of the youngster wait just a minute Hayes answered fella the ponies need to get free Kamas Irvi cautiously. Followed the family in his vehicle learning the specific area of their home prior to pulling out from the scene the family delighted in seemingly a serene and ordinary supper uninformed that it would be their latest possible moment together in the early hours while everybody rested with the exception of the dad William unimposing who had snoozed off in the lounge their tranquility was broken by weird commotions inside the house the following thing William recollected was a feeling of sluggishness torment and a failure to form a cognizant idea commas arjv and Hayes had gone into the house through an opened entryway and at first wanted to loot the family anyway the night took a disastrous turn they found a home run stick in the house and utilized it to over and over beat William who stayed cognizant in spite of the attack he heard one of the gate crashers say in the event that he moves shoot him William was restricted with zip ties and ropes immobilized and bound to a shaft in the storm cellar the interlopers then went higher up to find Haley's room where she was dozing Haley and Michaela PTIT were limited by their options and feet to their bed posts and their heads were covered with pillowcases in the meantime in the main room Jennifer Pettit had nodded off the gate crashers discreetly went into the room and awakened her absent a lot of exertion they limited Jennifer's options and feet feeling in charge of the house the gate crashers took as much time as necessary to examine it in any event smoking cigarettes in the parlor subsequent to gathering gems cash and different resources they chose to leave it appeared to be the trial was over for the Petit family as they heard the Criminals leaving anyway their torture was a long way from being done in the wake of selling the taken things. At a pawn shop and acknowledging they hadn't gotten as much cash true to form the ex-convicts propelled by ravenousness chose to get back to the house they then, at that point, found a really look at register with 40,000 they chose to take 155,000 they likewise had halted to fill several gas jars prior to returning as found in reconnaissance camera film back at the house they told Jennifer their arrangement taking steps to kill her whole family on the off chance that she didn't coordinate. Frantic yet thinking about her little girl's well-being Jennifer consented to go with. Stephen to the bank the following morning in the meantime Joshua exploited of Jennifer's non-attendance going into Michaela's room loosening her and starting to strip her he took photographs with his cell and attacked her recording the demonstration a while later he took her to the restroom to clean her guaranteeing no DNA proof was passed on then arranged her to return her night robe on and tied her up again proof that commas RV assaulted Michaela came from her examination during which state. Clinical inspector Dr. Wayne Carver tracked down his DNA in her body at the bank everything apparently worked out positively yet Stephen neglected to see what Jennifer did while in the cup prior to moving toward the teller she composed a note on a flyer requesting assist the note with perusing I am Jennifer Bird of Prey Petty I want to pull out 115,000 from my bank account my family is in peril if it's not too much trouble call the police or they will be killed the teller chose to give her the cash despite the fact that Jennifer had no distinguishing proof with the money close by Jennifer passed on the bank to get back to the vehicle with her capturer while the bank worker quickly called the police to report the episode the chief told the dispatcher of the 911 line that bird of prey petty had shown that the home trespassers were being overall quite that she accepted they just needed cash the Cheshire police answered the bank's report by surveying what is going on and setting up a vehicle border without uncovering their presence the police now mindful of the circumstance saw from a distance without mediating back at the house Joshua let his associate know how he had treated Michaela recommending he could do likewise to Jennifer decisively Stephen curbed Jennifer squeezed her body to the ground and started to disrobe her William had the option to hear his significant others attack higher up he hollered up and heard one of the trespassers say don't concern it's all going to be over shortly in the meantime William unimposing recapturing cognizance and hearing his better half's shouts figured out how to free himself and creep to the storm cellar steps in the end coming to the patio he later said I believed it's presently or never in light of the fact that to me at that 
second I thought they planned to shoot us all and brief Joshua went to keep an eye on William just to find that he had gotten away from Hayes said in her admission that while he was assaulting Falcon Patty on the lounge floor Commer JSKY entered and reported that William had avoided hearing this Stephen choked Jennifer to death while proceeding to attack her not long after they heard William yelling for help his neighbor who at first didn't remember him because of the wounds called 911 promptly. Understanding the police would before long be known as the interlopers chose to wipe out all proof haves and commas or v dowd Jennifer's inert body and portions of the house including the girls' rooms and girls themselves with fuel examiners would later find the catalyst on the Petit sisters' beds and on the dress they were wearing Hayes and commas RV lit a fire and flood the scene ignorant that the specialists had obstructed the region a couple of miles ahead they slammed into a police vehicle in five minutes or less. After they were encircled by the police the two culprits were pulled from their vehicle and captured they were quickly recognized as ex-convicts in the meantime the fire in the house was quickly growing an emergency vehicle showed up and moved the seriously harmed father Dr. William Dainty to the closest medical clinic without further ado a while later firemen endeavored to battle the burst and after stifling it found a terrible scene in the remainders of the house the primary body found was that of Jennifer totally Chade with leftovers of rope around her lower legs after arriving at the second floor they found Michaela attached to her bed totally consumed by the fire Haley shockingly had figured out how to compel her limitations and endeavored to get away yet imploded only a couple of meters away having breathed in a lot of smoke William had the option to free himself of his restrictions leave the house and creep to a neighbor yard for help the neighbor at first didn't remember him because of the Seriousness of his wounds both Hayes and Kamas Argy admitted to the homicides investigators. Affirmed that feed resembled gas all through her cross-examination each assailant guaranteed that the other was the main impetus and brains behind the home intrusion Kamar Javi likewise faulted William for the homicides in Kamar Jai's journal which was subsequently placed into proof he considered William a quitter and guaranteed that he might have saved his family on the off chance that he needed to Stephen Ruffage's preliminary started on September 13, 2010 with a jury of seven ladies and five. Men the safeguard contended that Joshua Kamas Irvi was the mastermind behind the wrongdoing and liable for heightening its savage nature while examiners held that both Hayes and Kamas Argy shared liability on October 5 after around five hours of pondering the jury viewed Hayes to be unquestionably blameworthy the condemning stage started on October 18 with the jury at first split over suggesting life detainment or demise Ruffage's guard contended that life detainment without any chance to appeal would be a more extreme discipline on November 8 the jury suggested capital punishment for Hayes on every one of the six capital crime counts Hayes had recently endeavored to arrange a supplication expect a lifelong incarceration however examiners looked for capital punishment Dr. William unimposing the last one standing remarked on the decision and the Connecticut state legal branch offered present horrible pressure help on members of the jury because of the upsetting idea of the preliminary without precedent for state history the Connecticut state legal branch offered present horrendous pressure help on members of the jury who served for a long time on the triple Homicide preliminary since they had been expected to take a gander at upsetting pictures and hear grisly. Declaration on December 2, 2010 Hayes apologized for the aggravation and enduring he had caused the Petit family and added that passing for me will be a welcome help and I trust it will carry a harmony and solace to the people who I have heard such a lot of Judge John Blue forced six death penalties and 106 extra years for different wrongdoings anyway Feed's capital punishment was driven to life detainment in August 2015 when Connecticut cancelled the death penalty Joshua Kamas or JV preliminary. Started on September 19, 2011 his lawyers advertised a blameworthy request in return for a lifelong incarceration yet examiners went for the gold punishment contending that Kamar Javi was a befuddled man driven by Hayes Kamas SJY was found liable on October 13, 2011 and the jury suggested capital punishment on December 9. 2011 during his condemning Kamar JSKY talked about his disgrace and hurt brought about by the wrongdoing demanding that he didn't plan to kill anybody Judge Blue set July 20, 2012 as Kamis JB case execution date repeating. 
his obligation regarding the wrongdoing anyway like Hayes Commer Jai's capital punishment was changed over completely to life detainment in August 2015 after Connecticut nullified capital punishment the preliminaries and ensuing condemning of Hayes and Commas RV denoted a huge and frightening part in Connecticut's lawful history the severe idea of the wrongdoings and the preliminaries profound cost for all included including the members of the jury featured the intricacies and difficulties of the overall set of laws in managing such heinous acts drive modest explanations during the Preliminaries highlighted the enduring effect of the wrongdoing on getting through relatives and the local area which keeps on regarding the memory of the casualties the main survivor Dr. William Dainty was released from the medical clinic four days after his admission to go to the memorial service of his family tormented by culpability and the torture of having endure he later settled an establishment to help kids and youthful survivors of savagery raising countless dollars consequently as an individual from the conservative faction he wandered into legislative issues and turned into a state delegate the killings of the petty family left a profound effect on the local area which accumulated s yearly to honor them questions stay among relatives and people in general about whether the specialists acted accurately in their reaction to the circumstance the time spent by the specialists noticing what is going on from a good ways might have been essential in forestalling the misfortune